Welcome back to Bedanza Disc Golf and to kind of an actually real bag getter minute today. We haven't done one of these in a while because we've been doing a lot of beat the bags where we put a disc up against a disc in my bag to see if it kind of stacks up and how it compares to what I've been used to throwing. But today, I think there's a slot in my bag that I need to fill. So today's video is gonna be a few different things all surrounding these two discs here against kind of these three, which are already in my bag. You guys know the Honor 950 2.5. It's basically Latitude's Thunderbird. Uh, the Strike, which is like an Explorer, a T-Bird, an Athena, my straighter fairway drivers. The problem is seven speed, it can go far, but you feel like you really have to power up on it for it to go really far. And it's a little bit touchier because of that. Once you get into those high speeds, it's not quite as torque resistant, even for forehands. This Honor has a lot of fade right now. And I love a really beat in Honor, like the one that Kevin Kiefer was throwing, his flippy one in our video, but it takes forever to kind of beat in this plastic. And unfortunately, I do feel like there has been a gap in my bag, which is the only gap that I anticipated having when I was building the bag, but it's in this 95 negative one, two category. it down that should be perfect okay not even close to as much anhyzer out of the hand but it also flipped up honestly this wasn't a problem for me when i was just playing wide open hyzer courses like in denver i was thinking about bringing the undertaker into this video to also throw it against these two discs but i really don't like the shape of it and i've actually already reviewed that disc against the athena where i thought hey paul's probably not gonna have both of these in his bag i think i'm wrong about that and i think he does have both of them in his bag and the reason for that is that i feel like the shape shots slightly differently. So here's that strike, that seven speed that I threw. And I'll show you in the next tee box what these guys are. But I feel like your seven speed is gonna shape slightly different than your nine speed. I just like flip points, how fast it is, and also how fast it gets through the air. I'm not 100% sure if I need a difference, but we're gonna throw this dynasty real fast. Oh, told you what the disc was. Yes. So it's a little inside, but I don't hate it. And I'll throw the second one, which is a very related mold. If you kind of know about like what they're both molded after, just like a laser beam. Just so good. It doesn't sit down very well like that. I'll try a strike, similar stability I feel. Not as much flip up even actually. And it just doesn't, it doesn't go as fast because it's smaller of a wing size and because you hit trees. It just felt like there was a lack in my game of that pushing nine speed because the Honor does, but it pushes while it dumps, which is like it more than a Firebird because the Firebird just kind of dumps. But these guys will push on hyzer and they're not flippy. They're like stable, not overstable, not understable, stable. Oh, that's why, get it in the air. But I also think that a lot of this has to do with the type of player that you are. And this is something that I've had to come to terms with over these past couple of tournaments. I definitely had to come to realize that I prefer to throw on just a touch of hyzer out of the hand instead of a little bit of Anheuser. And I feel like the Honor is really good if you wanna throw on a touch of Anheuser out of the hand, because it'll have a similar shape, but still different. Like these are still two completely different discs. But I also found that the Strike, I really wasn't trusting it on like those pushing hyzers when I'm out in the field. I would much rather disc up to an Honor, but feel like I have to throw it slightly flatter instead of kind of my stock release. So I felt like it was messing with some things and you wanna to play to your strengths in your game. And sometimes that means taking a step of humility and being like, hey, maybe I didn't build the perfect bag for myself and I might have to add something to it. Got bit by a mosquito as I was running up. <laughs> yeah, a little less hyzer. Just kinda a little short of the basket. I'm really struggling to commit with this new form that I'm kinda working through. The Honor though, if I throw it on that hyzer, it's dumping. So we'll throw it on a touch of Anheuser more. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of Annie, or a lot more Annie, cause the other ones are on hyzer. Similar spot. Okay, so even here I was actually wrong. I thought that the Honor would be similar distance. And uh, maybe it was a little more nose up, but we have the CD1, or Dynasty is there. CD1 is actually a little bit farther there. And maybe my arm will speed up and I'll just be throwing the honor like these ones. But I think in the woods too, there's a place for those hyzer flip to turn discs. And this is what these will turn into. And I need that at a nine speed that's not a heat. Because that was the disc that really made me think about this. Because I had a crystal sparkle heat that you guys have probably seen in some of my videos, or a lot of them. And it was a Ledgestone 2022 edition. Oh dang. And that one... I lost two of in a practice round from my last tournament, meaning I had none of those left. And those aren't just like stock heats that you can just go buy anywhere. And I don't want to rely on limited edition stuff. And they still, I didn't even take them out of my bag as much because they still were a little too flippy and too touchy for what I needed. Not how I'm thinking about it and why I think I need it. Um, with every hole that passes, I'm more and more confident that I do. All right, our third hole here is just this iconic hole at Blue Ribbon Pines. 
straight ahead, 450 feet. Light headwind ripping through, and I think this will help to show us like why I like these discs a lot is because they don't move as much left to right as a 12 speed driver does, but they go a little farther than a seven speed with similar ease, I'd say. But well, hopefully we can see why I want one of these. Uh, Dynasty. Exactly why. That was beautiful, perfect, wow. Yeah, I mean, that's almost as far as I put my Faro down there with like a full turn. Hopefully we can do the same with the CD1. Just slight hyzer, left side, hard. Yes, dude, those discs are so good. And that's why like, it's gonna move a little bit more to the left because I think it's a little more stable, which I might prefer to start out with, get one little lead in, really seasoned. That way like it doesn't get too flippy too fast. But here's the strike. Mm. I genuinely, whenever I throw those, I feel like I have to hit them a little bit harder when I'm through the woods to get like that straight line as far as I can. Like there are distances where I think it's good. For some reason, I just feel like it's easier. Maybe it's just like the rim is more comfortable in my hand. And then here, like, I don't even know if I can get the honor to go straight down there. All right, Dynasty here. I mean, and that almost brings us to the next point, which has something to do with that. But uh, CD1 kind of snuck through this side, honestly. Pretty much the easiest birdies you can expect on this hole. This is a tricky one. I don't know, man, that Dynasty, the sea line plastic that I have the same sea blend, sorry, is very gummy and comfortable. It feels slightly more rounded. It's gonna be hard to decide which, if either of these, will go in my bag. This is just faster. It feels like it's just a little faster and a little more stable. Hey, it's been if you're watching this, uh, hit up your boy, Jonathan Fletcher. He's the one who kind of put me onto the CD once he was throwing them in my tournament that I played with him in KC. Get that man a bonus. But this hole is 535 feet up into the right. We're gonna throw these ones on pushing hyzer forehands. Try to go through that left gap. That's one of the things that I think will be good for this is because with my honor, this is a really hard gap to throw down. Oh, and I didn't pick up my... <laughs> My honor is always on the floor, I guess. Oh, I totally didn't even pick it up and it's at the start of this hole. Dang it. Uh, the strike though, I feel less comfortable forehanding because it's a seven speed. Like it's doable, but I feel like I have to put on so much hyzer that I misrelease it a decent bit. Whereas these guys, I feel like I'm a little more comfortable putting them on a lot of hyzer, but like really hitting them hard and hopefully they work well. See how we do? Yeah, like that flips up, but like a really nice flip up. And that is gonna be in the birdie zone. So the same thing with the CD1. Yes, oh my gosh, that's like the easiest pushing hyzer ever. Now I gotta get my honor to show you. So this one, I can't really put on that hyzer and have it push, cause it's more stable. I'd have to throw it on a baby hyzer or flat and trust that it's gonna finish at the right point. See like it just starts to dump a little bit more. I have to trust the hyzer like, that almost was a really good shot, but I had to leave it out there on a baby hyzer instead of hyzer that I'll kind of stand up and push on. <sighs> okay, it's time to get serious about these guys. That's hole 12. We're gonna try to see if like all the good holes on 12 through 18 and keep score between these two discs. I don't know if that's gonna be the determining factor, but my initial thoughts are I prefer the CD1. I was a little predisposed to it, I think. I might be able to get other colors that are slightly less stable because I know Disc Mania, for some reason, their ceiling plastic is color dependent. Probably like the flight of this one a little more than this one right now out of the box, but this will turn into this and this can never turn into this. And I feel like I need something to start here. So honestly, Dynasty might feel slightly more comfortable in the hand, but they're both very comfortable. Like it's very close. We'll see what ends up happening. I might have to try out a Halo Dynasty. I did not think that'd be that big of a difference to my honors, my strikes in this, but there definitely is. And I definitely, definitely need this disc in my bag. One of these, at least. Okay, flip up and starts to turn over in that wind. That's fine. We should have a decent little forehand up shot there. I think this one's not gonna flip as much, but I don't know, definitely some wind out there. <clears throat> not as much flip, but straight into the tree. Why'd I do that? Both of these are based on the CD2 from Disc Mania. I know I hinted at that way earlier, but this one is the old CD2 mold that Innova just gave Infinite, or from what I understand. And then this is basically trying to replicate the flight of the CD2. And I don't, I don't know anything about the CD2. I just know that these two are molded pretty similar and they, they're not like, they're honestly, they're similar. Actually, whoa. The disc mania seems to be a little sharper. They're pretty similar. I promise I did not move this disc. <laughs> it's a nice little turnover forehand. Little two nose up. Oh, lucky. Um, we're gonna try that Dynasty again on that similar line, but not be lazy about it. And actually like, just get the nose down.
Really nice. I do definitely think though, the CD1 has a little more stability and I feel like just based off that first shot, it'd be a little harder for me to trust the Dynasty in the wind because it doesn't feel as fast or quite as stable in that C blend as that CD1 did. And that's kind of the problem I had with my heat is I really only trusted it maybe in a tailwind and even then just maybe. Whereas I feel like I'd be able to trust the CD1 a little bit more. I just have to actually remember to throw it right. Wow, that might be the luckiest par that has ever been seen on this channel. Maybe the disc golf universe is telling me something. Maybe I shouldn't have come into this video already a little bit biased as to which one I thought I'd like more. Probably recency bias because I threw it in that mystery box video and liked it, but this hole is 408 feet, which I think is like what eventually these are going to be for me, ideally, as I speed in my arm. They literally changed the course today from the short positions I was playing it in when I was here earlier. Oh, did they just, they just combined them? Oh, <gasps> no way. Oh, it's a par four, it's a par four. Good, good, good. 420 foot par four. There's not really a good line to get to the basket for Eagle. I'm sure someone could. Like there's a line there, but honestly, we're gonna try to throw it through this Anheuser gap, the small one, and just kind of see how that goes. Mm-hmm. Try the CD1 and see how I'm sabotaging things. See, sabotage. Wow, that's so good. Let's go, dude. See a little too much glide. Oh, dang, that's still a look, but. All right, you can see the hanging basket there. Pretty good shot here. Well, it wasn't a run, stay in. And now it's 35 feet. <laughs> that's the problem with throwing nine speeds for approaches. <laughs> it's a better bid than I spit it being, honestly. No! <laughs> Throwing it too high in a 30 foot tall basket. Dang it. Alrighty, hole 14, 640 foot par four. Water carry to start with a little headwind. This branch is lower than when it was today. That's kind of rude of it. Uh, we really just kind of want to get through this gap. Basically, just throw a slight hyzer so it'll flip up, ride flat, and uh, finish a little left if any finish at all. Trust your throw, man. Yep, went for a little ride, but it's exactly what I wanted it to do. It's definitely a little flippier too. Wow, and less fast. I feel like I'm right on all those fronts and I feel like I like the Dynasty like for my stock release right now, but not in a month, that's the problem. I don't know what to do. If anyone like has slightly beaten CD1s or like knows which colors, of CD wants to get, definitely DM me on Instagram. Apparently there's OB on this left side, which I guess makes sense, but I actually didn't know about it all. And it looks like pull to pull. Oh my, I'm actually, <laughs> I mean, you might not believe me, but I'm act, <laughs> I'm in balance. Maybe the CD1 just wants to stay in balance too, man. It's really fighting for my affection. Basket straight out there. Just that little pushing hyzer through this left gap. Well, I feel like that's super short because I felt like that was way closer and it's actually way farther than I thought. Yeah, I thought that was way long and it's like part, so. Good birdie with the CD one. Hole 15, par four, 550, up into those woods and then to the left. That tall grass you might be able to barely see is a lake. So you can't, you need to be lefter or just try to clear it. I'm gonna try to clear it and be left. So I took two days off, so I thought I feel rested, but I think I needed to do more active rest because I just like rested, rest. <sighs> Too high. Definitely cleared, kick out, get lucky. Shoot, that's a Firebird, not a Dynasty, you ding dong. <clears throat> Kind of got a little forehand roll ski. Try to get up to the pin. <clears throat> Not quite to the pin, but should be an open look for a par at least. Okay, this position is sick. This is even actually harder than when I was here earlier. And then I'll have to show you where the CD1 is. I'm gonna have to put that disc in my bag just for the luck factor. <clears throat> nice. I still might be able to make birdie with the CD1. That's so silly. This is another T pad, which I don't think is in use right now. And my CD1 <laughs> somehow found it. So not an easy shot, but. I mean, still have a chance to make birdie from here. Are you kidding me? 
I parked it for, for birdie from a shank. I was already leaning towards it, but I think the fact that this is literally the luckiest disc that has ever been invented, and Discmania just happened to send it into a mystery box that was going to David at Apollo Disc Golf, who just happened to put it in my mystery box for my video, and then I kept it. It's, it's a magic disc, that's all it is. Honestly, this is just silly. Like, you guys are literally gonna think that I keep moving this disc. I have not touched it, like, I'd show you all my lots. What? Is it now two under since we started these holes? When it should be like six over? All right, second to last hole, maybe third to last, but I think one of them is like 220 feet, so we're probably not gonna play it. This honestly is like pretty much the only hole that we might have needed to do this video. Straight ahead, 388 feet, 390 it says on there. We'll call it 390 because that makes me feel better about myself. Slight hyzer and semi-high so that they flip but ride the hyzer. <sighs> That's way too much hyzer nose up. Are you kidding me, dude? That's like embarrassing. Man, that thing is so much flippier. I mean, great ride though, great distance. This isn't a hole for these discs for me yet. Especially not the way I'm throwing at the moment. Ugh, now I'll throw a destroyer. Yeah, I mean, definitely goes to show, like, stay in your lane with your discs, because that's just where I'm pretty sure is literally next to the basket. Whereas all these other ones are not even close. That's a little bit of a pump, I think, just because the angle, like, it's forcing a hyzer. So you have to throw a hyzer 390. Even though it's slightly downhill, it's still kind of a pump. Got a long look from the Dynasty, and I think a longer look from the CD1. Oh, gross. Well, now that's about as close as my destroyers. Honestly, that's even better than parked. I'm parked and behind the basket, so... <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Wow, this is so far. Why did I do that? It's the CD1. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is no business being three down right now. Now, like, I know I've talked a lot about flight numbers in this video. I was like, oh, it's a 9.5 negative 1.2 disc or whatever. Now, personally, I think flight numbers are more important or, like, helpful than a lot of people, especially on, like, Disc Golf YouTube. They're definitely not the end-all be-all. I definitely don't think that they're accurate all the time, but I like them as a starting place to be able to talk about speeds and stabilities of discs. Because when you see 9.5 negative 1.2, you think neutral 9 speed. What I'm looking at is like a flip up 9 speed at my arm speed right now, which is 399 feet, we'll call it. But it doesn't have to be 9.5 negative 1.2, it can be a 10 speed even, just like a straight disc that will flip up. You can hold a lot of lines with it, very workable. And I didn't think I needed one of those in 9 speed when I had one in the 7 speed, but I think the faster your arm gets, the more difference you see between speeds of discs. So my five speeds are flying very different than my seven, which are flying different than my nine, which are flying different than 11, which are flying different than 13, but I only have 12 speeds, so 11, 13, not really worried about. So the gap between the seven speed strikes and the 12 speed destroyers that were neutral, I was seeing a big need to fill, whether that's eight, nine, 10, 11, whatever the company calls it. I think just a neutral nine speed uh, is, there's a lot of companies who make good ones, and these are the ones that are working for me, but they might be a little more stable for you if you throw slower than me, and they might be way too flippy for you if you throw a lot faster than me. And you might just need an honor or a Thunderbird, where I'm definitely looking for something that's straighter than that right now at my own slot. Alrighty, we're gonna end it on hole number one instead of 18. Straight ahead and up to the left. Tailwind big right to left still towards that, towards those trees, but not at them. Hopefully they finish in. It's 340 feet, nothing crazy. I definitely think CD1's probably making it. Riding that wind a little more than I'd like. Definitely want to put that a little flatter, but somewhat of a look. Dynasty looking real good. Skip in. Oh, under the pin. Might as well end it on a bang real fast. Oh, I get in the air. So I definitely think that equally as important as a disc's flight is, is how much you trust the flight of that disc. I honestly just felt like I was trusting the CD1 a little bit more than the Dynasty, even though I honestly slightly prefer the flight of the Dynasty right now. I think it's just gonna continue to change as there are some flights that like I love out of the box and they just kind of beat into a slightly different point. I feel like the CD1 will beat into the point where I really like it. And I already am close to really liking it. I don't not like the flight. Like a lot of what I can do with it, I probably have to manipulate it a little bit more than I'd want, but I can rely on it a little bit more. Even though it is slightly less rounded, so slightly less comfortable, still feel like I'm getting equally as good, if not better releases than on the Dynasty. So I think that this is the one that's going in my bag, and I think it actually is going in the bag. So, and it's gonna replace that stable heat slot. It might work to replace one of my strikes, but I think the speed difference is still too much. Uh, just more field work will tell. 
but this is the one going in the bag. If you have any suggestions for good colors, let me know. If you wanna check out the last, not Bag It or Bin It, but Beat the Bag, check that out right down there. Gonna be filming another one here soon with a new boy from MVP. Appreciate you guys so much for watching. Notice this was a little hectic, but so was my bag and so was mud. That's it, okay, love you guys, bye.